All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back after hopefully a good lunch to the Breaker Track. My name is Dan Gora, and I'm currently a volunteer here in the OWASP community and currently leading the OWASP Frankfurt meetup and also serving as the board member for the OWASP Germany chapter. I'm delighted today uh, to be moderating the session and as the first talk today uh, in this after lunch talks, we have Simon Bennett talking about the recent updates of the OWASP ZAP project. So just to keep in mind, if you have any questions, please submit them in the Q&A tab just on the right hand side of this video. So we will leave about a 10 minutes in the end to cover any questions that you have. And I'm sure you will, there will be lots of questions. So really looking forward for that. Keep in mind that the chat is disabled. So feel free to leave your comments in the Wuva chat provided. All right, let's get started. So as most of you are probably aware, Simon is the OWASP ZAP attack proxy project leader. The ZAP project is probably the most widely open source dynamic application security testing tool and also an OWASP flagship project. Simon himself is a distinguished engineer at Stackhawk, a company that uses ZAP to help users fix application security bugs before they actually hit production. And also Simon has a strong track of having talked about and demonstrated ZAP as a, a tool at conferences all over the world, including Black Hat, Java One, Fostep, and of course, all the good OWASP uh, conferences like OWASP AppSec EU, USA, and Asia Pacific. However, prior to making the move into security, Simon has been a developer for almost uh, a quarter of a century and strongly believes that you cannot build secure web applications without actually knowing how to attack them. All right, Simon, are you ready to present? I am, uh, hopefully. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, I will share my screen. And hopefully you can now see that. Yes, we can see your screen. Great. Uh, well, I don't need to do any more of an instruction because uh, Dan's done that. Uh, so this is a general talk about the ZAP project. And in this talk, I'm going to give a general introduction to ZAP uh, for those of you who aren't too familiar with it. I'm then going to talk about uh, the work in progress, the stuff we're doing on Zap at the moment. And for a significant part of the talk, I'm going to give a demo. Um, it will be live. So uh, fingers crossed the demo gods like me. Um, and I'm going to show a whole range of things, really. I'm going to I'm not go into any great depth here because there's a lot of depth to go into. Uh, but I will show the desktop app. I will show how you can set up authentication and pull it all together and show you how you can actually set up the uh, automation framework using authentication as well. So that's the plan. So uh, what is Zap? Always a good place to start. Um, so Zap is a tool for finding vulnerabilities in web applications. And I think the key thing here is that it's really, look, it's trying to find vulnerabilities in custom web applications. So we're not looking for CVEs typically, and we look for some, um, but we're not looking for known vulnerabilities in known applications. There are other tools that do that very well. We're looking for new vulnerabilities in new applications. This means if you write a new application, web application, and no one's ever looked at it, so there'll be no CVEs, that will still potentially find a whole load of potential problems with it. It is a flagship OWASP project, um, as is already mentioned. So these are the projects that are um, most mature and really recommended uh, for getting started with application security. Like all OWASP projects, it is completely free and open source, and it is cross-platform. So uh, Zap is written in Java. If you've got a JVM, then Zap should run on it. Uh, I think I've got it working on a Raspberry Pi a few years ago. So uh, it was a bit slow, but it still worked. It is well maintained, and I kind of make this point because over the years we've seen a lot of um, uh, web security tools come and go, and quite a few of them, you know, start well but then they uh, languish and don't get many updates. Zap is one of the few uh, open source web security tools that's been maintained consistently for the last twelve years, and it's obviously going very still going strong. And finally, uh, we believe it is the world's most popular web scanner. Um, that is a bit of a bold claim, but I've been making it for quite a few years at various security conferences and no one's disagreed, so it must be true. Uh, but as you'll see from the chart down there, um, we have uh, we had over 3 million check for updates um, last month. So every time Zap starts up, unless you turn it off, um, it will do a check for updates check. 
Um, we do know people turn it off, so with Zap will be running a lot more than, than that. Uh, it is used by enterprises and individuals all over the world, and it is the foundation for many commercial tools. And we have a whole set of um, statistics available on zaproxy.org um, ZA slash doc slash statistics. So who is Zap for? So uh, when I released Zap uh, back in 2010, uh, originally, I was just aiming at developers and functional testers, and the reason for that was because um, I really didn't feel I'd cheek to, being a developer myself, I didn't have the cheek to um, claim that this um, Zap was ready for security people as well. Uh, but we know students make a lot of use for it, uh, of, of Zap, and it's particularly useful because obviously there's nothing to hide. All the source code is available, so you can see exactly how Zap works and you can get involved and help um, make Zap better as well. But uh, a lot of security professionals use Zap now. Um, it was only a couple of years in when I had to change the tagline for which used to be um, the security tool for developers because so many security um, professionals complained and said, hey, it's for us too. Uh, so we know that Zap is used by a wide range of people from people who are just starting out on a security journey to people who are very experienced and use a lot of other security tools. So how can you run Zap? So we have a desktop um, GUI, which I'll be showing you later. That does require Java, although you can actually run it in Docker as well if you want. We have a heads up display. Um, so this actually basically injects Zap or Zap content into your browser. Uh, that's not something I'm gonna demo this time, uh, but demoed it quite a few more times. Um, we've got loads of videos on zoproxy.org. So have a look there if you want to see that in, in, in action. Um, and automation. Uh, automation is a key thing for Zap. Uh, it is one of Zap's strengths and something we do particularly well. And we know a lot of people use Zap in automation, probably use it in automation more than um, manual testing right now. And, and there are lots of different ways to automate Zap. We do have a command line. Um, so I kind of don't recommend this um, because it's quite simple and doesn't really um, you know, there aren't very many options. It's quite simplified, uh, but we do have these Docker package scans and these are um, very well used um, and they allow you to do a whole set of things. We've got the, the um, we've got the baseline scan, which is kind of a very simple explore zap using one or both of the spiders and then passive scanning. So it's actually quite quick. Um, it means it's um, very good to include in CI CD. Um, we also have an API scan where you can import your API definition, whether it's open API, SOAP, uh, GraphQL, anything like that. And we have a full scan where Zap will do one or both of the spiders, we'll do the passive scanning, and then we'll do the active scanning as well. So the Docker package scans offer you a lot of um, functionality, a lot of useful functionality, and provide some simpler options. So those are good options um, for um, using Zap in an automated way. We also have the GitHub Actions, and they actually match those same Docker package scans. They use the Docker package scans, uh, but they are available uh, on GitHub, and therefore you can um, run them on GitHub's infrastructure rather than your own. And they do have the advantage in that they actually integrate with GitHub issues if you want. If you provide the right credentials, then the Actions will be able to raise issues on your repos. We do have uh, something new called the Automation Framework. Not quite so new anymore, uh, but it's something which is kind of ongoing. And it so happens that we are migrating the package scans to use the Automation Framework. So if you're using the baseline scan right now with some of the default options, chances are you're already using the Automation Framework. Now, I think it's worth pointing out that we do have uh, a lot of information online. So. If we go to zaproxy.org uh, and we have a look at documentation, one of the things you'll see is automate and we have all of those options down here. And if you have a look at something like the GitHub actions, that will then take you to the GitHub marketplace and you can see the, the actions and you can then install them from there. So we have a lot of really useful information on zaproxy.org. So I strongly recommend that you kind of have a look at that if you uh, want to learn more. 
Finally, we have the API and daemon mode. And this is something that, and this was the original um, way, the only way you could automate Zap really. Um, and it is um, very full functional. So you can start Zap in daemon mode. So there's no um, GUI at all. And then you have nearly full control of it by the API. It is very similar to actually running it via the desktop, except using the API into the desktop. And you can do nearly everything you can do via the desktop. A couple of things, I think fuzzing is not possible at the moment. Uh, we plan to add API calls for that. Uh, but the reason we introduced the package scans and the automation framework is that we found a lot of people found the API quite complex. Um, and you know, if you want to do some standard things, then the package scans and the automation framework are easier to use. Uh, but if you want full control, then use the API. And the, uh, the package scans and the GitHub actions actually use the API unless they're using the automation framework. The automation framework doesn't use the API, uh, but still uses the same functionality underneath. So how often is SAP released? We try to do a full release at least once a year. So Zap is, has a plug-in architecture. Um, this means um, we can update, add functionality to Zap and update them whenever we want. Uh, but the core, we can only update when we do a full release. Um, we want to do, we try and do those at least once a year. We've been trying to do them twice a year and not succeeding very well. The last release was sometime towards the end of last year, I think, uh, which is, 2.11.1 now. So I said, Zap's got a plugin architecture, so we have add-ons and they are released as and when required. And if I actually switch over to um, zedeproxy.org again, we can see we've got the marketplace here. This marketplace is accessible within Zap. You can actually show, um, install all these add-ons from within Zap, uh, but we've also got all the information online as well, if you want to have a look at that. But we do uh, have weekly releases. So this is a zip file and a weekly Docker image as well. And we have actually a live Docker image. I say live, it probably should be daily now. Um, so these images are um, and releases are available uh, so once a week or once a day. And occasionally we've had the case where people have um, got in contact with us, with us, say, via IRC, reported a problem, and we've been able to fix it and release it and have them try out the live Docker image within an hour. I'm certainly not promising we'll do that every time, but it has happened more than once. So that was a very general uh, overview of Zap. Do we have any questions so far? There's a one question by Svetlana, um, which I'd like to ask, uh, how can Zap be used to test mobile apps? Right, so that is, if I go over to, zdproxy.org. If you have a look at the documentation, we have a set of frequently asked questions. Uh, these get quite bigger, um, so I'll just do a search. For... And down here is technology supported, can Zap use test mobile apps? And yes, so we actually have a video from ZapCon 2021. So you can actually watch that video and there are a set of um, other videos, third party ones about setting that up for Android and iPad. And there are online articles about um, um, from third parties again for how to use Zap to uh, intercept, intercept Android traffic, traffic, debugging iOS apps and ways to bypass Android SSL verification certificate pinning. Uh, you'll see none of this content has been created by me. I don't tend to get involved with testing mobile apps, but people clearly do. Um, and that's all, that's a whole set of information, which hopefully will be very useful. Great, thank you, Simon. There's no further questions, so we can cover the, the other ones at the end, I guess. Great. Okay, so um, I'm not, oh yeah, work in progress. <clears throat> I thought it was a demo, but uh, no, still something to go through. So the second part is talking about the work in progress, I stuff we're doing on Zap right now. And Zap is one of the most active um, OWASP projects, code projects certainly, and there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, got a load of stuff to release, uh, but the stuff we're working on now, um, one of the key ones is networking. 
So Zap is actually using the same networking stack um, that was in Paros when I forked it in 2009, 2010. Uh, this networking stack is really showing its age and we've had various problems with it. There are certain types of attack that we can't do because of restrictions. Um, it's a bit slow and it's not being well maintained or not this particular, the branch we're on is not maintained at all. So uh, Ricardo has been wor working really hard on completely replacing the networking layer. This is a massive change. Uh, it's changed the core, it's changed the add-ons, um, but it's progressing very well. It's not finished yet, uh, but we're moving to use a new library called Netty and a couple other um, libraries as well, but modern libraries, which are well-maintained, and in time it will allow, the plan is it will allow us to support um, HTTP2 and other uh, modern protocols going forward. So this is a very big, very significant um, change, which we've actually wanted to do for, for a long time. I think I was talking to, uh, chatting with Ricardo about it in 2011. So uh, it's been a long time coming. The automation framework is something we're still working on. Um, you'll see that it's pretty functional. It's, you can use it right now. Um, it is, you know, we're starting to migrate the package scans to using it, but there's still a lot more we can do. Uh, so this is something which is ongoing. And if you have any feedback or, you know, things you'd like to change or improve to, to do with the automation framework or anything else for that matter, just get in touch. Then there are the scan rules. Now, this is something we haven't uh, um, kind of focused on as much as we should have done over the years, uh, but we're now focusing more on those. And one of the things we've been able to do is we've got this new Stackhawk Zap fund and we've got bounties. So what I'll just do is switch back to uh, ZD proxy to talk. And what we've done is if you have a look at the documentation and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see some test scans. So what we're doing is we are automating Zap to run a set of, against a set of te well-known test applications. Um, at the moment, these include Google Firing Range, Google Security Crawl Maze, websites vulnerable to SSTI, which is OWASP project, and Yahoo WebSec Lab. And if you go into any of these, you actually see um, the results. So you can see how we're doing, and you can see exactly where we're passing and failing. So we've been very honest about this and you know, very open about it. And these run every day. And you can see actually some of these, the escaped XSS, we know some of these are not vulnerable. So we're probably scoring less than we should do. But one thing you will see is that we are actually, we've got bounties on these um, according to the Stackhawk Zap Fund. So the Stackhawk Zap Fund is a fund dedicating to improving Zap and there are bounties on a whole set of issues. And if you actually want to go back here, I think we've got a blog post about that as well. So, yeah. And so what happens is if you go back to these examples, you'll see that quite a few of them um, are eligible for bounties. So if you want to make a bit of money and help SAP get better, then you can work on these, it's both the scan rules and actually the um, so security crawl maze is for spiders. So you can see um, if you make Zap better against any of these things, then that could well be eligible for a bounty. All the stuff is available online. Um, so if you want any more information, just get in touch with myself or anyone else in the core team. Uh, but this is something that we're focusing a lot more on now. We want Zap to get the scan rules to get better and for Zap to be able to explore web applications more effectively. Uh, so there's a real focus and uh, we'd love your help. And if you do know of any, uh, if you have any applications where Zap doesn't crawl them effectively, please let us know. Uh, I've asked on Twitter and I've got some responses, but nowhere near as many as I'd like. I want to have more and more examples of where Zap doesn't um, explore web, web applications effectively, particularly modern ones, um, because that's something we're focusing on as well. We are taking part in Google Summer of Code once again this year. Um, Google Summer of Code, great initiative. Uh, for those of you who don't know about it, Google will pay students to work on open source projects. OWASP has taken part many years. Um, Zap has taken part for at least nine or 10 years, I think. Um, 
And this year we've got a student working on Param Minor. Um, so this is actually a Burp Suite add-on um, written by James Kettle originally, which is open source. And so we've got a student, Arka, who is working on this and porting that to Zap. Um, so this is something I'm very excited about and it'd be great to see how it gets on. And just so you know, um, if we go back to uh, Zap and you have a look at the community section, you will see we have a student hall of fame. So we've had loads of student contributions, very significant student contributions, and all of the ones that have been released uh, are listed in this hall of fame. Uh, and one thing I do want to stress is that Zap is very much a community project. So if you'd like to get involved, please get in touch with myself or anyone else in the core team. And one thing that I, I can <laughs> kind of, I mean, it's a bit of a cheat to say it's work in progress, uh, but it has just started progressing. Um, we put a pro, uh, proposal into OWASP to get a commercial company to create a Zap Train the Trainer course. That proposal has just been approved. Um, so that's something that's just started. So this commercial company will work with us to create this tra Zap Train the Trainer course, and we will release all of the material um, open source for free, of course, like all OWASP material. Um, so that's something which, uh, yeah, I, I'm announcing now and something really looking forward to. So that's everything I was going to go through, um, background to Zap and what we're doing. And uh, now it's demo time. So uh, fingers crossed for the demo gods. So first of all, um, this is the Zap GUI. And if you're, so if you're not aware of this, um, this is what Zap would look like when you started. Uh, I'm not gonna go through everything, but I'm just gonna show you just how you might get started. Uh, I'm gonna try and show you how to start exploring application and go set up authentication, go all the way through to setting up the automation framework. It will be kind of, very high level, um, although I will be doing everything in actually doing everything, um, but I won't show all the options because that would take, well, it would take many, many hours. And we have got lots of videos um, going into details on many of these things. So if you're starting with exploring application, or you want to test an application, even if you want to end up automating that testing, we recommend you start off by exploring it manually. And the best way to do that is to do it uh, via this manual explore option. And the reason we say that is because you can configure your browser to proxy through Zap, but then you need to import the Zap root CA certificate and all that kind of mess, messing around. Whereas Zap can do that all for you and we can just launch the browser from Zap and then you can explore your application. And I've chosen a very simple one because I wanna keep things nice and simple. So what you want to do is you don't want to explore your application. I'm not gonna do a very good job of that. Uh, but you also want to authenticate as well. Um, and hopefully test at test.com will work and test one, two, three. Amazingly secure, I know. And yeah, so I've successfully logged in. So what we'll see now is within Zap, we have the history. You can see all the requests that I've made. And if you select any of those requests, you can see the actual request and you can see the responses here as well. So this is the history of everything you've done um, as part of your testing, all the requests been sent by Zapple proxy through Zap. And then on the left-hand side, we will see the sites tree. So this is a hierarchical representation of your site. And it's actually important that this is an accurate representation. We kind of need to have each of these nodes a separate functionality. So you'll see here, the get to login.jsp is different from the post, um, partly because it's using a different method, but also because it's got parameters, um, which you can see here. Uh, and because it's got a different method and different parameters, we assume it's different functionality. And that means we will attack these two nodes separately, which is important because otherwise we attack just one of them, we wouldn't be, uh, testing all of uh, the application's functionality. Uh, one thing I will note um, is down here, we already have a number of alerts. So because we are proxying through Zap, Zap 
performs passive scanning. Um, so it is looking at all of the requests and responses, and it is finding vulnerabilities just based on that without doing anything nasty at all. Uh, so just by proxying your requests through Zap, it will start telling you things that are potentially wrong with your application. So I'm not going to explore the application anymore. I'm just going to leave it there. But what I want to do now is set up authentication. And to do that, we need to have a context. That's where we hang these things off in Zap. So in Zap, right clicking, right click everywhere. There's always a whole load of options. Uh, we try and put a lot of stuff into right click, click options just to make sure we don't overwhelm you in the UI. So we want to create a new context with budget. Um, here it is, and you'll see it's named something sensible like budget. And it already, because I've right clicked on that node, it's everything under budget.star. So it's all based on regexes. Don't need to exclude anything. We do have this authentication section where you can set up the authentication manually. I'm not going to do that because it's error prone and there are better ways of doing it. We also have an option for users, which I will set up. Um, and session management. At the moment, I will just OK that. And one thing I will go back to is we did see we had this post request um, following the login, which is good to know. And if we have a look at some of these responses, so it's worth always keeping an eye on the um, your application while you're testing it. And if you notice, we got this user test at test.com and if we log out we've got guest user so here we can see we've got this test.com um, and here once we've logged out we'll see we've got guest user so i said we can actually set up this stuff manually oh other thing i should mention is if we have a look here we'll see we've got a j session id cookie Actually, if we go to the params tab, you'll see anywhere you see a blue, um, sorry, a green plus, we have a load more tabs available. We don't want to show them all because we found it overwhelmed a lot of people. But you'll see we've got a whole set of parameters that Zap is aware of, including this cookie J session ID, um, and that is has got a flag of session. Um, so we know it's session ID. So that's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the post request, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to flag it as a context that's a budget form based uh, authentication login request. And that then fills all this information out for me, which is what I wanted. I didn't want to put this stuff in manually. And why do it when Zap can do it for you. You'll see we've got the post data in there, the username parameter is right, the password isn't right. So we'll set that. You see, we've got this authentic authentication verification. So we can check every response, every request, request or response, or poll a specific URL. Uh, every response will work in this particular case. And I will add the user. Oh, actually, that is just a, a useful name. So. These are the real credentials, test one, two, three. And session management, you'll see we support cookie-based, HTTP, auth, and script-based. Cookie-based is the, is the default. Uh, in authentication, we do want to check every response. But again, I'm not going to bother filling that stuff in manually because there's a good chance I'll get it wrong. So have a look here. We've got, I will just search for that string there, right click it and flag as context. That's a budget authentication logged in indicator, which gets filled in there. And if we go back to the history and pick one of the early requests, then hopefully that'll just have guest user. So we can right click and we flag that as the budget logged out indicator. And we recommend if you've got both of these using them, it just gives us extra data. And I'll show you a bit more about that in a minute. So that should be 
um, everything I we need. So what I'm going to do now, I mean, you can test this stuff in isolation, but I'm feeling um, kind of feeling lucky. So I'm going to try and spider this um, with authentication. So right click, attack and spider. So we've selected the starting point. We've got the budget context and it knows it's in that one. And oh, good, we can select the test user and we will start the spider. And you'll see a whole load of requests here. And in the sites tree, you'll see new um, entries being added. That fuzzy icon there is actually a little spider. So we know that in the, in the about.jsp, we visited that manually, but the admin.jsp, we didn't. So we can actually tell which things we failed to find. And if we look at the messages, hopefully if we select any of them, look at the response. If things went well, then yes, user test at test.com. So Zap automatically authenticated us um, using the details we provided. However, that's, you know, that one's okay. Hopefully this one will be okay as well, but you don't wanna go through and check every one in detail. Um, so, and you don't have to. Um, that's because Zap maintains a set of statistics. So if we go over here and I'm gonna put in the Zap URL, so this is the um, host and port Zap is listening on. Uh, and we've got a link to the local API. So we can explore the local API. Let's see if we can make that a bit bigger for you. Uh, and there's a whole load of components, but I'll scroll down to the stats. And in this particular case, so we've got site specific stats and um, general stats. I look at the all site stats and show everything. So we can see for HTTP, localhost, 8080, we have a set of auth stats. So there were 101 requests which were logged in. And so those are ones which had the logged in indicator. Four were logged out. So they had the logged out indicator and two were unknown. Um, so those are probably things like um, CSP pages. So they didn't have either logged in or logged out indicator. There's 101 logged in. That's a pretty good indication that everything was okay. So we now have some level of confidence that this spider actually worked. So uh, that was a very quick run through of how we can set up Zap. Um, so doing it manually. Uh, so what we want to do now is show the, you the automation framework. And one of the reasons we, um, it's already mentioned that the automation framework is a bit easier than using the API, but also it's more integrated with the desktop now. Uh, we plan to add more integration, but I'll show you how far we've got. And what we have is we have a new automation tab. So we can create uh, the automation plan within the desktop and we can test it in the desktop and then we can export it because the automation plan is just a YAML file, which we can then run from the command line. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to create a new plan and you'll see it already recognizes we've got the default context and budget. And these are all the jobs. So an automation plan has a set of jobs and you can have as many of um, these make sense. So you can run the spider multiple times if you want. You can have them in any order, but we have a order we expect them to be running most of the time. And we have a set of profiles. Uh, I'm gonna go for the baseline one to start with because this will be quicker. And I'm gonna turn off the Ajax spider because we don't need it for budget and it will take longer. And I don't wanna take up too much time. So I will now create this plan. So we will see, you can double click on any of these things and you'll see we've got uh, the budget um, context there, got the include exclude. We haven't got the authentication details in there. They are still there, but we just don't expose them via the UI yet. Um, and just double check what I'll just check my thing to make sure. So one thing I want to do is the spider. We do actually want to run this as an authenticated user. So that's how we put that information in. And what you'll see is down here, there's actually, uh, there's a bit of a hierarchy. So we have a test here. So this is a statistics test to check that at least 100 URLs are found. 
Um, so you can see that um, we're checking that the spider run through the automation framework adds at least 100 URLs, which is kind of useful. So we'll know if the spider actually fails to um, find as many URLs as we expect. But we also want to check it's authenticated. So we can add another statistics check. And this time, we will want to check, and I'll just copy and paste this so I don't make a typo. So the statistic is that we're logged in, and we're going to fail the plan. And we do need to put the site in um, because these are site-based stats. So if you don't put the site in, as I did when I was trying this out, then it won't work because it won't find a generic, a, a global stat like that. I want to check that it's more than, I'll go for 100 again. So the idea is this will actually then check that we are, have made as many authenticated requests as we expect. And what I'll do now is I'm gonna create a news app session. Now, normally this would actually wipe everything. You see it wipes the sites tree and it wipes the history tree. It doesn't wipe the automation plan because we think it's a kind of useful thing to for testing automation. So I'm now gonna keep my fingers crossed and run the automation plan. And you'll see there we kicked off the spider and you can see down here, we've actually got the passive scan running. So that's why that is still going. And we can see that at least 100 URLs were found and the authentication was okay. And if we switch over to the output panel, this is the output that you'd get if you're running it from the command line as well. And you can see that 132 URLs were found by the spider and 110 authenticated requests were made. Um, so that's why these things passed. And you can see uh, the passive scan finished and we've actually generated a report. So let's see if I can actually highlight these things properly, copy that and have a look at the report. And you may notice the very different report from the old styles app ones. So we've got a whole new reporting framework and we've got lots of different types of reports, which is well worth playing around with if you're interested. And you actually see we've got a lot more detail and you can actually see the request or not the body because it's zero, uh, but the response body here. So you can see a lot more information. So our reports are a lot better than they used to be. Um, that was something which was done a while ago. Uh, and so zap reporting is a lot more uh, effective and useful than it used to be. So that was a quick run through um, of how you can go from manual testing to setting up an automation plan. And because I'm on a bit of a roll, I'm gonna try adding um, active scanning as well. So see here, we can actually, I'm gonna add a new job and we're gonna go for the active scan job. And in this case, I'm gonna turn most things off because this would take quite a while, uh, much longer than I've got. Uh, but what I want to do is I'm just gonna, test for one thing, which is cross-site scripting. So turn everything off, go here and add cross-site scripting reflected, if I can say it, and change the default, or so the threshold to medium. So that will turn this one on. That's the um, default strength. And again, we want to use the context and the authenticated user. So that then has been added and you'll see it's kind of a gray box because this one didn't actually run. Uh, and while I'm here, I will see if I'm feeling really lucky and choose a different report, just because. And I think that's everything. So I will create a brand new session, which is always good when you're testing the automation framework, just to make sure uh, everything is working the way you expect. And there we go. And we will see. So well, that's just the authentic. So we can see authentication is um, successful there. And what we can do is we can go and go back and see these stats at any time. So again, you can see load of logged in requests, logged out, and here's the authentication success, and there are no failures. If you are actually interested, then go to the 
what we have under the documentation, we scroll right down, we have internal statistics. So these are all of the statistics that are maintained by Zap. This is the only place you, you can actually see all of them because um, add-ons can add their own statistics and many of them do. Uh, but here are the full details. And if you actually, so let's have a look, obviously this is filterable as well. So authentication logged in and we can actually take you to the code. So this is the code where that authentication statistic is maintained um, and there you can see it. So if you actually want to get stuck into the code and see where everything is, we try and make that as easy as possible. Actually, while I'm here, I will mention, let's go back and we have all of the alert details here. So say you want to have a look at the cross-site scripting. So I scripting reflected, um, you can see all the details and you can actually, again, this takes you directly to the code. Um, so, or the, the main class involved. So what we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible for people to see what's going on and to get involved as well. Uh, said Zap is a community project and we are really keen for people to get involved. And so we try and make it as easy as possible. And so it looks like, yeah, passive scan can take a little while to run, but we'll see again that we have 100 URLs, um, more than 100, and the authentication is okay. And we haven't got to the active scan yet. Probably the longer budget runs, uh, the more pages are found, and uh, some of them can get a little bit complex. mentioned that you can install uh, add-ons from within Zap. So here is the manage add-ons option. So you can actually, these are all the add-ons that I've got installed. And if we do a check for updates, then we will see the marketplace as well. So these are all the um, add-ons on the marketplace uh, that I haven't got installed and have got installed. And obviously I can select anything I want and install them. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning, so this passive scan queue is going down very slowly. Um, one of the problems we have with the current version of Zap is there is only one passive scan thread. Um, and this means the passive scanning can take uh, longer than it could do. And the good news is that that is no longer the case. Um, you'll see I am actually running um, Zap 2.11.1. If I was running the, um, the latest dev release or weekly, then this wouldn't be a problem because we've added uh, passive scan threading. So basically we've got a configurable number of threads and that significantly improves this problem where I'm sitting around in a demo um, waiting for this to finish. And it can um, improve scan times quite a bit as well. So the passive scanning we know can take a while, um, but that is solved in the latest dev and weekly releases. And while I'm here and waiting for this, I will mention the reporting. So we do have a, so the reporting option, obviously you can um, look at it via the GUI as well. And here are the, uh, what we've got is a whole set of different types of reports, um, different templates, and each of them supports different sets of sections. So you can choose um, what you want to go into the report um, they'd have different filters, like on risk and confidences. You can change the scope, you can change the title, a uh, whole load of options. So there's a lot of things you can do. And if we have a look at the website and look at the reporting add-on. Then, I believe, go down, you can see the templates. So these are all of the templates we have available. And if you actually have a look at them, then they've got screenshots as well. So you can get an idea of what the reports will actually look like. 
and you'll see that these are quite these are all quite different um, and it is much easier to actually um, create reports as well as got JSON we've got all sorts of different options including a PDF one um, and if you want to create your own reports it is much easier than it used to be and hopefully now uh, it looks like the passive scan has run so yep we'll see that the passive the active scan has run and hopefully yep it looks like we've got a cross-site scripting vulnerability but actually it should be the same Get the right browser nope Sorry. try and get the right browser And there you can go. We've got a very different report, uh, but it's reporting. It's got the cross-site scripting reflected vulnerability. So that is um, so. Basically, what I've done is I have gone through from uh, exploring an application manually, uh, having a look at the how it authenticates and how it handles sessions. I've configured that in Zap manually. Um, and I tested it using the spider. I've shown you the stats and then uh, actually created an, an automation plan, um, got it running the spider and then and changed it so that it checks the stats as well. So we can be sure that the authentication is still working. Um, and I've um, then added active scanning as well. And so what you can now do, um, we can save that as a YAML file and we can run it um, from the command line with Zap and automate everything. And if anything significant changes, so, so we don't spot, find as many URLs as we expect, or if we find too much, we could add extra chest, um, checks in there, um, or if we don't authenticate enough, or if we have too many authentication failures, you can add as many of those um, tests as you like. Uh, so it is very flexible and should give you a lot more confidence that your automated scans are doing what you really think they are doing. So that is the demo. Um, and now I can switch back to the, um, the slide. And I said more details, zaproxy.org. Uh, but now I think I've got time for some questions. Thank you very much, Simon. Amazing. So we've got actually quite a few questions. Um, we probably won't be able to cover them all. Mm -hmm. um, but let's just get started with one of the the, the biggest questions is, uh, what is the best language, in your opinion, to write authentication scripts in? Oh, good question. Uh, authentication scripts. So basically, um, so we have scripting here and I've probably got quite a few. Uh, I'd say, I mean, Zap supports a whole set of scripting languages. I think it's whatever scripting language you're most comfortable with. Uh, so we support things like Jython and JavaScript and Zest scripts, uh, which I think it's kind of Zap's graphical scripting language. Um, I'd say, I mean, JavaScript is pretty good. The only problem with JavaScript is um, there are two different JavaScript engines, thanks to uh, Oracle. Um, so it, you do need to make sure that JavaScript will work with the engine that you choose. Um, but yeah, it's whichever one works for you. They all should work in the same way. There shouldn't be any, apart from Zest. Zest is significantly different because uh, it's more of a graphical um, templating language. Uh, but yeah, whichever one works for you. Great, thank you, Simon. And that actually leads to the second question by Jeremiah, which is uh, about the Zest scripting languages, which was created mm -hmm. by Mozilla, but is not actively maintained. So are you planning to invest more time or into Zest as a scripting language, or do you want to sunset it? Um, well, it is actively maintained. I mean, we haven't updated it very much recently, I'll have to admit. Um, but when I left Mozilla, uh, we went through the process and Zest was transferred to the Zap project. So it was created in Mozilla, uh, but the Zap pro project now owns the Zest language. We are certainly planning on maintaining it. Uh, one of the problems we have is that there's, a, there's too much to do and not enough people. We need more volunteers. Uh, so if you'd like to get involved with Zap, 
there's always a million things to do. Um, just get in touch with myself or any of the other ZAP project leaders. Um, and But Zest is something we plan on maintaining. Um, we haven't spent as much time on it as, as we'd like to have done, uh, but it does kind of mostly, would, it works pretty well for what it does. There are lots more things it could do. Uh, I agree, but uh, yeah, we will maintain it. Uh, it. We're not, no plans to sun sunset it yet. Okay, great. And there's another question by Mark. So um, how does Zap upload tests in its automated scans and can that be actually included? Upload tests, sorry. I think it's probably just the, the way you can import tests and how you can include that. Okay, so um, we have, um, so both active scan rules and passive scan rules, and we have um, different add-ons for the release quality add um, scan rules, which get included with Zap. Then we have beta quality scan rules and alpha count quality scan rules. Uh, well, rather it's status rather than quality. So any new scan rule will start off as alpha status, then get promoted to beta once it has a bit of exposure, and then hopefully get promoted to release as long as it's uh, well behaving. Uh, so those are all in the marketplace. And uh, right. so I've actually, oh, that's the marketplace. So, so you can see I've got the, um, release um, status, alpha state and beta status, and the passive um, release and beta status scan rules. Some things like SOAP actually add their own um, scan rules. So add-ons can add their own scan rules. Uh, so any add-on can add scan rules as long as it's specific to what it's actually trying to do. You can also have scripting um, scan rules. So I've got some here, and there's actually a project for community scripts. If I can uh, go, so, so there is a community scripts add-on. So this has got a whole set of uh, example add-ons um, written by the community. And that's actually, there is a, an add-on which just includes the, the community scripts, which you can, um, so we've got a set of active ones there and passive ones. So, you know, you can, import rules, oh, sorry, um, Zap add-ons, which include scan rules, or you can import scripts as well. So there's lots of op op opportunities there. Great, thank you. Now, there's another question by Mark on uh, how can you actually handle multi-step or multi-page authentication as part of the automation? So uh, scripting, that is, that'll be your friend. And you can either do it, um, by just making those requests from the script. Or this is where Zest probably does come into its own uh, because what you can do is you can record uh, requests, um, the, the kind of the, the ones made to the server, you can record those uh, using Zest and replay them. And with Zest, you can, um, you can add loops, you can pull stuff out of um, requests and responses, you can reuse them. So Zest is very much a macro language designed for manipulating um, requests and responses. So you can, if you want, go down the um, kind of JavaScript, um, Jython script, whatever, and, and make all those requests yourself, or you can get Zest to do it. Um, so that's one area where Zest is pretty good. Okay, awesome. And there's actually a question for myself, um, which I find always like as a comparison between OWASP, Zap, and Burp Proxy. So Simon, from, from your opinion, what do you think are the main advantages of using OWASP, Zap, over Burp Proxy, especially, especially for automated security testing? Mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, uh, I have to say um, Burp Suite is a, an amazing tool. Um, you know, it's industry leader for very good reason. Uh, but I do think um, Zap has a lot of strengths, and one of them is automation. So automation is something we've really focused on. Um, the API is incredibly powerful. Uh, you can do pretty much anything you want uh, with the API. And I said the automation framework makes it so much easier to go from the Zap um, desktop where you try things out, get things working. Then you can move that into, you can create an automation framework plan within the desktop. You can test it there. Then you can export it and run it from the command line. And of course, um, the fact that Zap is open source and completely free means it's so much easier and cheaper uh, to run Zap at scale. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. 
And there's just uh, time for two more questions. Um, the first question is, do you need a larger number of application to test Zap against? Uh, if so, what application with what technology do you want or need to do this test? Yeah, uh, I mean, so one of the things, we, we find it difficult to get good feedback from our customers because you know, we don't have um, any sort of agreement with them. So getting information about real vulnerability is tricky because uh, the customers can't always share enough details with us. Um, but it also takes a long time. Uh, so if we have a look at something like the scans we're doing Zap against at the moment, uh, these, uh, it takes a while to actually set up. But actually setting that up to scan these things is pretty straightforward. Uh, point Zap at it, tweak the configurations and we can run Zap against it. The fun part is the scoring. So it's these things here. It's the, does Zap actually find something? Uh, either find something or you know find a page or find um, a vulnerability. And those are the things that take time. Now, something like um, Crawl Maze was very easy because it has these kind of found pages. So scripting that was straightforward. Um, websites vulnerable to STI, that was another pretty easy one. As you can see, we're showing all the different rules that find these things. And uh, so that was an easy one to score. I mean, all of these were relatively straightforward to score, um, but a brand new application, finding out the you know, running Zap against it is easy, knowing how well Zap did against it and being able to reproduce those, um, th that score is harder. Um, I've tried to get contributors to help with that and it's not been straightforward. So it typically ends up being me who does the, that integration. Um, so, and I'm kind of a bit time constrained. So we definitely want more applications to test Zap against. Um, if it comes, if you're talking about modern apps, we'd love to have those, particularly for uh, exploring and finding problems where Zap doesn't explore them properly. And I'm not so worried about the scoring there because we can always see how those things work and then test, um, create test cases from them um, or do the manual testing. Uh, but yeah, if someone would like to get involved, help us scores up against other vulnerable applications, then please get in touch. There's uh, loads of fun things you can do. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, there's a an OWASP vulnerable web applications directory project that uh, I'm one of the co-leads and so is uh, Rick, one of the Zap project leads. We um, co-lead that along with a couple of other guys. Um, and there's loads of vulnerable apps on there. So there's loads of vulnerable apps I'd like to run Zap against. It's just finding the time to get that set that automation up and the, the, the scoring to work out how well Zap does and make sure we're always improving. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. So um, if you have any more questions to, to Simon, just feel free to reach out to him um, either through Wuha or just uh, reach out to him in Slack. I mean, it's just more questions, but I think there's uh, probably more that you'd be able to cover afterwards. Um, I'd like to thank Simon very much for your presentation. So we've seen a really great overview of OWASP, uh, how to do set up, automated testing, um, things like improved passive scans, so all the, the cutting edge features, uh, as well as statistics. One thing I'd like to point out is the huge community that actually Zap has. So I just checked on Slack and has over 1,000 active users just on the Zap channel. Uh, and as Simon mentioned, if you want to get involved, just feel free to, to join Slack. Just look at the issues on GitHub and uh, yeah, just, just uh, reach out. And also, there's a really good conference every year, the ZapCon, um, that we also myself highly recommend attending. So again, Simon, very much, thank you very much for attending. Um, and thank you, Dan. Next, thank you.